Are you going to design a mobile screen for a project but you don't want to mess it up? Then make sure you follow these 5 principles to start on the right track. So when it comes to web design, we all know how to use the 12 columns to actually make sure our spacing alignment works very well in our screens. Now, in mobile app design, I strongly urge you to stop relying on the column view our layout grids and instead use this simple trick I'm going to share with you which will make your mobile app designs look much more sharper and also let them be much more minimalistic. So when we actually look at this web design we can see these 12 columns and the basic application of this technique to a mobile app screen is where we use 5 columns. But quickly you learn because the real estate we are working with is so small I realized I never use the remaining two, three columns to actually organize visual information. The columns that were most useful were the first one, the last one, and also the kind of the middle one, which let me actually organize and align my information. So instead of actually continuing to use these layouts, I actually began using the ruler option when it comes to Figma. Basically, what I do is, especially here, let me grab the screen, if I press Shift R on my keyboard, I can actually see my rulers here, and I only use three for the left, right, and middle, and I align most of my screens with this one. This lets me accomplish two things. First of all, my alignment is pretty simplistic between all of my elements. It's either left, line, right or center which makes actually putting elements in their place very easy the second thing it helps me accomplish is because i don't have many columns to organize my information i really have to ask myself in this screen what kind of visual elements play the most important role principle we are actually going to go over is to learn the difference between list view and card view and how to know when to use which most of the mobile screens we design usually have one of these UI elements and it is very critical when it comes to mobile design to know where to use which one. So the general rule of thumb I have is if let's say a particular visual element leads more than three types of text information between three to five, I would actually go for a card view and if it's less than three, I am usually going to go for less view. And there are, there are benefits and cons for each choice, right? For the list view, you, the user can actually scroll very fast of what they want, but the amount of information we can put here is much more limited because we have much more small space. Whereas in card view, we can actually have much more different information, not just the price or the, let's say, the type of the room, which is now two pieces of information, but the rating, the address, if we wanted to say, let's say availability, we could also put that one and we can also put an image. So if it's above three pieces of information and maybe it also needs something like a visual touch because if you are going to, let's say, book an apartment, you probably want to see how it looks like, I would use card view. And if I want to optimize for speed for small information, I am actually going to use list view. For example, in this screen, the the visual elements that play the most important role are this graph and probably the budget I have for these texts here. Whereas if I had let's say three, four, five columns, I might have tried to put not only just two types of text here, but three, four, five, and I would actually add clutter to the screen, which is something I'm really trying to avoid. The next mobile app principle we have is about sizing when it comes to buttons in mobile design. When we are working on a mobile screen, one of the key things that we have to remember is because the fingers are much less precise than let's say mouse, we, are, we have less precision, the kind of the height of the button has to be a lot higher than the actual button if it were to be designed on desktop. So in desktop you can get away with roughly 32 pixels, but in mobile you probably want it to be around starting with 40 pixels upwards to 60 pixels where you will start seeing diminishing returns. Now next principle we have in our hands is to remember there is no easy hover state in mobile so that the user can actually discover certain actions much more easier like desktop. For example, if we were to look at this Figma app that we are using right at the design, 
look at if I hover my mouse here, I actually get to see as a user what kind of action I can do. And this hover state helps me a lot, knowing the action I would actually have when I click on this, let's say, menu item, without even clicking it, just seeing once I actually put my mouse over it. This kind of state does not exist in mobile, which is why actually for most actions, especially with iconization, it is very helpful to have small labels because the user has to actually take a lot bigger of a risk. This will actually make your mobile as much more understandable and easier to use. Once you actually understand labeling is very important with icons, you kind of have to ask yourself, okay, what kind of icons should I label and what kind should I not? And that is a very good question because some icons are actually pretty standard. Like if we actually were to use the plus icon here, which is pretty standard, we might not need to actually, let me just give it the color. We might not need to actually put a label on it because most people, when they see it, they understand it. But that is not the same case with, let's say, the analytics bar graph icon here. So it is really knowing which kind of icons are much more obscure. And you really have to rely on your knowledge of using other apps to know for sure if you should label it or not. Finally, as you remember, the real estate in mobile apps are very small. So one trick we can use is instead of showing all the actions available, we can hide it behind, let's say, an icon or an action and show it only if that particular action is clicked. So if we look at here on the left side, we just have a details where the user would go to a details screen. But instead of going to a particular screen, we could also just have it turn into an icon like a more menu and put the actions in the menu here. Now the benefit of actually having the report and details action hidden inside the menu instead of showing them on the list itself is actually pretty self-exploratory because they are actually going to take a lot of space and we only have so much horizontal space when it comes to mobile app design. So to actually make things much more economical, we are hiding them and unless they are clicked, we don't need to show them. Now the items that you want to hide, you want to make sure that they are less popular than the actual primary action items on the screen. In here, that might be actually fil filtering by, let's say, the type of the building it is, etc. You really want to hide things that matter less so that the things that are most important are actually present for the user's needs. Hey guys, if you love this video, you will love this advanced UI design tricks that will take your design skills to a whole new level.